a glorious and marvelous day today. And to Jesus be the glory. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Today I have with me Pastor Dan Willis. You know, every time you are you are with me, it's exciting. I'm so excited to be here. Really, I am. I don't know I'm why you tolerate me, I'm but really I love it so much. I I'm always good. feel like I'm sitting at the at the feet of Gamaliel. Oh, please! No, no. sincerely, I love it, Pastor Ben. Today, today we, we we're going to talk about what's happening in Israel. Oh, I'm, I'm ready. I can't wait. And the Middle East, and uh, you, precious people of God, have your Bible with you because I'm going to show you some wonderful scriptures. But thank you for being my partner. I really mean that. Thank you with all my heart for being my wonderful family. Amen. Ah, wow. <laughs> Precious people of God. Oh, you have the best partners, Pastor Benny. They've you have there, the best. They've been there for the Lord in year, for years and years. They really have. Yeah. They have walked with you for years and been a nail in a sure place. Thank God. Well, let's pray. Lord, thank you for your love, your word promises. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we all cry, come, precious, come. come precious. Yes, Lord. Lord Jesus. And God's people said, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Listen, um, what's going on today mm. is really, I think, the most serious hour for the world. Yeah. You all know what took place a few days ago when Iran attacked Israel with missiles and drones. And, I mean, I think the, the whole world woke up to a, a, a new reality. For sure. And uh, a declaration of war against Israel, no doubt about it. There's a lot of questions and things are being said that, uh, you know, I'm from there. I'm from there. And I... I understand the mentality of, of the people of the Middle East I'm, because I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. It's all about deterrence over there. It's all about deterrence. Israel, uh, when, 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 when I grew up in Israel, in, even after we left Israel, that's one thing they kind of get into your system. Both sides, I should say, not, not just the, the uh, Israelis, but throughout that whole world, it's all about deterrence. Who can deter best? Mm. So the policy That's is interesting. Yeah, the policy is if you hit us once, we'll we'll hit you ten times to deter. And that was established by Ben Gurion years ago. Okay, uh, where he kind of uh, gave the uh, the early people of of Israel at the time after forty eight. The idea that that's the only way they can survive. And I think that spread to the entire Middle East. So now you see Iran, uh, what happened on mm -hmm. Saturday night uh, with the hundreds of drones and missiles. Israel is still at the point of uh, talking about when, not how. I think they already have a as, as the news said, they already know what to do, uh, but when. So they have to deter. The United States is saying, you know, don't do it. The UK says, don't do it. And other countries, so, but they have to. So you don't think they will let dead dogs just rest? Maybe for a little bit, but not for long. Not for long. Because what you have developing right now is uh, who's going to win, mm -hmm. who's going to succeed. Yeah. And, and Iran is determined. You know, the Iranian people are very smart people. Very, very smart. Oh, people. yeah, of course. And, and it, a determined people. Yeah. And you see their, 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 their history throughout the ages. Strong-willed people. So... We really need to pray that the Lord's will oh be done God. because a lot of Iranian people are precious. A lot of people of from course. Iran are wonderful people. Of course. I've met many of them in Los Angeles who became dear friends to me. Of course. Dear friends to me. Yeah. And, uh, and to this day, to this day, my favorite thing to do uh, when I lived there was to go to an Iranian restaurant ah. 
and eat their food and okay. and and shop in uh, Iranian stores. Okay. And uh, and I've 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 met many of them in those stores and mm-hmm. restaurants, and you know there are so many of them in Los Angeles that uh, became dear friends to me. And uh, you know you get to see these people; they're very intelligent, very intelligent. And and so today. Uh, we are seeing the beginning, no doubt the beginning, of Ezekiel 38. So, you know, I was at a, at a place a few days ago, uh, and uh, a lady was there. And so we were talking about this, and she said, is this the beginning of World War III? That's yeah. what she said. I think a lot of people are probably asking that. Pastor, I was, the one thing I was going to bring up to you is I've never heard in my whole life the words World War III as much as I've heard in the last week. In my whole life, I never heard well, World I War mean, III because as much now as the last you week see, because of this. Now you see that, you know, these missiles, I mean, were coming by the hundreds. Did you know that, I, I guess I didn't know Iran had that sophisticated that could go over Iraq and Jordan. I, I, I just didn't think Iran had that sophisticated of technology and Maybe equipment. more than most people realize. It, well, obviously. Yeah. Because that was a shock to me. I did not realize it was that sophisticated. Well, listen, I want to focus now on the word and yeah. what the word says. But you, you do have questions. I, thought. I really do. Well, go ahead. Well, I, you know, it's been absorbing that World War III concept and that Saudi Arabia also, you know, the situation with Saudi Arabia and Israel, I think it plays a big role in the whole Middle well, East let me, let situation. Me just, let me say a few things. And I was... Uh, some of my critics uh, said, uh, oh, Benny Hinn said there's going to be peace, now there's war. Let me explain that. You have critics? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? If we don't, we're not doing the job. Amen, right? amen. <laughs> if, we amen. Don't have, if we don't have enemies, I guess they just there, know there's who something to, wrong. I oh. guess they know who to do it to. Nobody what, would ever do that, brother, say that to me. But. I've, been, I've been in ministry 50 years. It's too late to, to really bother me. My amen. Skin, my skin is too thick. Amen, amen. Amen. My, you know what? My real heart goes out to the young people that don't know me. You know, I, my partners know me yeah. and trust me. Amen. Because they've seen all the battles I've had to fight. Amen. And I'm still here. But the young people, I love the young people in the church. I really do. They, they love me. you. Well, I, I have such joy being with them. Yeah. Well, such they love joy you. Being with them. And, you know, I'll probably say a few things about that down the road where they can get to, to know me better, you know, and to know my, my real heart on the subjects that the people seem to always bring up about, oh, Benny Hinn says this, Benny Hinn says that, whatever. Well, they but, love you. Anyways, let me, let me explain the, the thing with the, the Saudis. Ah, uh, I want to know. There has to come normalization to fulfill Bible prophecy. Yes, sir. In Ezekiel 30, it's clear. Sheba and Didan are mentioned, I'll show it in just a second, that will be on the side of Israel. So for that to happen, there's got to be some kind of change, number two. Number two is after the Abraham Accords. Bahrain, UAE could not have made peace with Israel without the Saudis saying, go, you know, go for it. Yes, sir. No way, okay? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Because of the influence of the Saudis. Mm-hmm. Number three. Number three is the the plan now to connect Europe with India has got to go through Saudi Arabia and Israel economically. They've been talking about it. For that to happen, which which, which will affect billions of people, it's got the, then that requires that some kind of normal relation will exist between the Saudis and, and Israel. And and many other reasons. Many but other had reasons. it's been started. Oh yeah, of course. So the war with Hamas was started to stop it. Oh. The attack, that's what you're you're hearing now a lot. And the smart I was I was listening to a very smart uh, British general okay. that talked about this. And he was very real and raw, and I loved what he said. And others have said it in the last few weeks. And I said it before, but nobody probably heard what I said. Two reasons this war happened with Gaza. And we'll talk about Iran in just a second. But two reasons. Okay. The war with Gaza happened, number one, because of the division within Israel 
mm -hmm. prior to that with the reform, mm -hmm. where yeah. they wanted to reform the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. which I think was very foolish, very foolish. Mm -hmm. Bibi, anyways, right now he's not making the right decisions, in my opinion, in my opinion. So he wanted to, to reform the, the way the Supreme Court works in Israel, but to really take away their power and authority and give more authority to the parliament or the Knesset, where they can change if a Supreme Court makes a decision that it could be changed by parliament. That's what the Israelis said, no. They wanted to keep the Supreme Court as is. So you saw many reservists didn't want to serve in the military. And, and the people outside Israel said, what's going on in them? Protests every day. Distraction. Very much. That a, became protests distraction. Protests every day for months. Yeah. For months. Yeah. And then suddenly, wham, that thing happens in yeah. October. We were supposed to be there. Yes. And you too. Yeah. We, we were taking a group of people. Yeah. And the whole thing stopped. Yeah. When that attack happened, that terrible attack happened, uh, that 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 Hamas launched, so that I believe happened number one because of the division, and number two to stop the plan of normalization between the Saudis and Israel. Because uh. had that and and what happened, you know, people accuse me of he prophesied. No, 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 I was repeating what Bibi said in the U.S. and the United Nations. At the UN, mm -hmm. Netanyahu said that no, that no more relations will come between the Saudis. He made that public. Mm -hmm. Besides that, besides that, it was also announced repeatedly by other people in that part of the world. And oh yes, it, you know, it didn't it didn't happen. But mm -hmm. but but still, I want to make it very clear. Normalization will happen between both. Oh, yes. I believe because that. Because the Bible says so. That's right. And the Bible doesn't say normalization. It just shows Sheba and Didon on the side of Israel when that war happens. But So that's the two reasons it really, that that whole thing began. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it just exploded into a bigger problem. Hezbollah got involved. Mm -hmm. And they're still involved. Yeah. And Iran is backing them up. Mm. So, you know, nobody had known, where is this going? What's going to happen here? The finance is coming to a great degree from Iran for, oh, totally. for all totally. of that. Yeah. So that financing the whole thing continuing. But now, you know, sadly, uh, some mistakes have taken place. And uh, yeah. uh, uh, former Prime Minister Ehud Barak, uh, whom I respect highly, he was a general at one time, has said some beautiful things and very smart things in many interviews. In fact, uh, I had Marie who's sitting here watch one of them. Um, I said, you gotta watch this. And you and you thought that was very well done, very well done. And others like him are really speaking out to say, listen, here's what we have to do. People of reason. People of common so sense. So, what is he saying that we have that has to be done? Well, what what he has, what well, it, it's a lot that he's saying, but mainly, uh, you know, BB is not doing it well mm -hmm. and causing more trouble for, for for Israel than most people realize. But, anyways, so you you have one more question, or shall I begin with the Please vote? Please begin. Okay. I got a ton of questions, but I want to. And I, I think I, this. I I hope I finished what I was trying to oh, say. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that about those two points of what you thought was the reason why this all happened. But yeah, that totally makes and, sense. And, and the poor Palestinians, the house they oh, they suffered. Yeah. They've suffered. Yes. It's terrible. There's no winner. No. Uh, nobody's nobody's winning. There's precious people on both sides. That's it. Good people on both sides. That's it. And especially because you know so many, you on both know, sides, on both sides yeah. it has to rip your heart out because knowing people on you both know, sides. You know, the thing for, for believers, I think we need to uh, stay away from the political Amen. and focus on the biblical yeah. rather than take, you know, here's, yes. you, know, you see these diff different groups today in the church, in the church. Yes, sir. 
Look, Jesus died for all. He didn't just die for one group. Yes. He died for all. Amen. He loves Amen. all. Amen. Amen. For God so loved the world. You know? Amen. And we have to focus and talk about the love of God towards Israelis, Palestinians. There's a great move of God today among the Palestinians. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The Lord is appearing to many yes. in Gaza. Yes. Because he loves them. Yeah. And inside Israel, there's a move of God today among the Jews and the Arabs. Yes. A great move of the Spirit. Yeah. I talked to a pastor this morning from Israel, a wonderful Palestinian pastor, and he was telling me what is happening. It's incredible. Incredible. Yes. So to God be the praise. So let's go. Ezekiel 38. And then I'm going to show you some other, other scriptures from Isaiah. And the word of the Lord came unto me, verse 1, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Now, it's interesting that Meshech is the ancient name of Moscow. Oh. And Tubal is Tobolsk. Oh. So we all know this is Russia. Russia. Mm -hmm. And say, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company, with bucklers, shields, all of them handling swords. You know, I, I remember a rabbi in, in Tel Aviv, uh, sorry, in Toronto, I meant to say Toronto, I said Tel Aviv. In Toronto, I, uh, after I got saved, I used to uh, attend a Bible study with a, with a, a Messianic rabbi oh, wow. in his home. It was fantastic. And I met him through through the catacombs, the church I went to. And he was teaching on this. And then he said to a little group of us, he said, now, you know, it talks here about, you know, old, uh, you know, armors rather than tanks and this. He said, that's the only way that the prophet saw a future, uh, you know, like weapon. Hmm. And like uh, uh, in the book of Nahum, uh, it talks about, chariots with fire mm -hmm. how would you describe a car mm -hmm. back then chariots with fire oh okay yeah, they saw fire coming out of the chariot oh, yeah. so the, the the prophet who had never seen a car or a tank or a plane how would he describe what he was seeing wow see that that is amazing so i never it, saw that well before. i heard that from the rabbi wow it's not an original from me yeah but uh so here bucklers and shields and so forth is, is something they could not explain in their uh, at their time but they say they mention persia they mention ethiopia which by the way here is kush parts of africa north africa and libya with them all with them and of course that too libya has a little uh, not the only nation but the uh hebrew says put which is a greater part of north africa all of them with shield and helmet gomer and all his bands and the house of Togarma, which is present day Turkey. Turkey, yes. Uh, of the north quarters, and all his bands and many people with him. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee. Be thou a God unto them. And then it says, after many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years, we're, we're in it. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, Holocaust. That's what that means. Oh. Brought back from the sword, from death. Oh. Millions were killed by Hitler. Yes, sir. Yeah. And it's gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste for 2,000 years. That's mm -hmm. what it means. Mm -hmm. But it is brought forth out of the nations. Brought forth out of the nations. The world that the people of that came back in 48 came from the nations. And that's exactly right. At, at the time they came back, they came from 77 countries in 48. In 48, 77 countries. 77 countries wow. at the time. Talk about the nations. The nations, and, wow. and they're still coming back. Yes, sir. Yeah. And they shall dwell safely, all of them. Now, how long did that, that take for those 77 nations? Say again. Was, was that immediate in 48? Yes. In 1948, when the Jewish people yes. began to go back, it was 77 nations that... Immediately? Yes, because they spoke wow. 77 languages at the time they came. I did not know that, 77 wow. nations. Wow. Anyways, that's, that's a little history. 
Okay. But it says all of them dwelling safely. Mm-hmm. Well, safely means peace. Mm-hmm. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land. Thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall also come to pass, that at the same time shall things come into thy mind. Now, thoughts will arise in your mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. Now, many have attacked this verse, well, you know, there's a wall there that separates Palestinians from, from, from the you know, Jewish people. So how can this be fulfilled, unwalled villages? I will go to them and are at, at rest. Well, that, that doesn't mean war here, because they're at rest. That dwell safely, here again, safely, all of them dwelling without walls, having neither bars nor gates. Something, now this is my opinion. This is my opinion. Okay. This is not, I'm not prophesying. Mm -hmm. So don't hold me to it, okay? It's my opinion. Peace has got to come between the Israelis and the Palestinians for a time. For a time. You cannot control two million people with, for too long. Mm -hmm. Many Israelis have said that over, over the years. Mm -hmm. Abba Eben used to say it, and others like him. Mm -hmm. The early fathers of Israel mm -hmm. all wanted peace. You know, whether it's, it's, it's Ben-Gurion at the time when, when he was prime minister. There's a fantastic interview, by the way, done with him at the time. I was amazed. It's, it's fantastic. I really? just watched that weeks ago. Or Eshkol, Levi Eshkol, who was the prime minister during the 60s, or before him, you know, uh, Moshe Sharet and many, many of them. And Lavon, Lavon was the president of Israel, fluent in Arabic, fluent in Arabic. Really? Speaks more, better Arabic than the Arabs. Wow. Because a lot of them came from the Arab world, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, you know, uh, Abba Eben, who was one of the most brilliant Israelis that ever lived, he was the foreign minister of Israel, and then the UN ambassador, uh, you know, before that. Wonderful man. I met him. Did I, you? Oh, yes, I met him back in the, in the late uh, 70s, early 80s. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was precious. I called him on the phone. I, I, I wanted to do a, pro, uh, a, a project with, with him, and that was just, just before he passed. So I met many of those Old timers, you know. I love those stories when you. And tell them. all of them are, are believed what I believe. Okay. That you got to come to some kind of a yeah a, agreement with the Palestinians. Palestinians. You can't yeah. rule people for yeah. that long. You know, I'm almost out of time. Can you believe that? Oh, are we? I oh my Well, heavens. you know, maybe we can just continue. Oh my heavens! Tomorrow, because I really want to continue this. Please. Sorry about the precious people. You know, let me go. Let me go a little extra, and then we'll we'll stop at a certain place, and then go on tomorrow. But peace will come, maybe mm. for a short time, but peace will come between the Palestinians and Israelis. It has to, to fulfill this. To fulfill this. Absolutely. Yeah. And we don't know what, what is going to cause it. It could be this, what's going on now. It could be this right here that could cause it. Really? Well, you know what they said. What, what, what they said is that when the Saudis uh, have normal relations with Israel, that peace will come between the Palestinians because okay. everyone needs the favor of the Saudis. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Financially. Yes, sir. So the, the, when, when normal relations begin to really happen between Saudi Arabia and Israel, Israel. the Saudis will, will be used in a powerful way to bring the Palestinians and Israelis together. Wow. And I could be wrong, but I could be right too to bring that peace yeah. that could bring incredible prosperity. Yeah. Otherwise, this could not happen here. Yes, sir. Uh, a land of unwalled villages and people at rest and safety, dwelling without walls, having other bars nor gates. That is not the, the picture of today. This picture is, is not uh, happening right now. So, and then you go on to, you know, to take a spoil and verse 13, Sheba and Didan, uh, and the merchants of Tarshish, the Europeans. So all that is mentioned in here. And now I got to stop. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, but can oh, we, we can go on. Please. Okay. Yes. So join us tomorrow. 
uh, this is Thursday, tomorrow's Friday, and I'll continue from here. I love it. People want to know. And you, your history is so steeped, in the, and you have the knowledge for there. it. That's why I'm saying. That's why I, I wrote a book called Blood in the Sand years ago mm-hmm. to explain the entire Middle East. Not many people read it because I'm known for Good Morning Holy Spirit and the anointing. I'm not known for it, you know, historical books, but I felt to write it to help people understand uh, that part of the world. But now, you know, nobody seems to understand a whole lot of what, what is going on and why. So we'll just continue tomorrow. Oh, I love it. Okay. I love well, it. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, you sweet people of God. And yes, I'm going to ask you to give Amen. to the Lord's work because it is honoring him. Amen. Honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruits of all your increase. So shall thy bonds be filled, filled. with plenty and thy presses will burst out with new wine. Amen. So uh, that is important. Amen. The Lord bless them as they give. Thank you, Lord. Prosper your people, meet every need in their life. Thank you, Lord. In every way. In Jesus' precious name, Lord, I thank you for your wonderful blessings coming our thank way. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we pray for peace. Yes. To come to the entire Middle East. Yes, Lord. To Israel and yes, the Palestinians Lord. and the Arab world. Bless them with the gospel and your love. Yes, in Lord. In Jesus' wonderful Jesus. name. And God's people said, amen, amen and amen. Amen. All right, you can give now on the platform you're watching me on. And remember, we are going to translate. And in fact, we're in the process. We're almost ready to release 12 languages. I love it. Yeah. I've seen so some of Everything I do today, huh? I've seen some of it. Everything it's I'm doing now is, uh, is being translated into Arabic and into Ch- Mandarin and Hindi and Swedish and Russian and Spanish and French. And so can I say one thing about that before we we're go? We're almost out of time. If we ever needed you to give and to support, it is now. We need the wisdom that Pastor Benny is bringing to us. We desperately need it. If you've given in the past and haven't given for a while, we this is really, this is more urgent than anything that's happening today is that the gospel can go out and Pastor Benny has the knowledge to do well, it. And bless you and thank, thank you. you. You can sew on the platform we're watching. Amen. They're watching us on. Go to our website, which is the simplest. Much love. I'll see you tomorrow. Amen. Bye-bye.